G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. With the new patch coming out, we have ourselves on hand a new Phantom, and I actually haven't covered the Japanese Phantoms before, so this is the F4EJ Kai Phantom 2. This particular Phantom has the F-16's radar, and has the body of an F-4E, roughly speaking. This is an export model, or a model that the Japanese Air Force used, and is, uh, damn. I reckon the best Phantom in the game, simply because it has that serious opportunity to surprise its opponents, I suppose, with them Pulse Doppler moments. And you know me and Pulse Doppler moments go hand in hand. I quite like Phantoms that have the Pulse Doppler function and have some good AIM 7s. And of course, that's kind of what we get here. The uh, Pulse Doppler radar facilitates the AIM 7E2 Sparrow, which is an evolution of the AIM 7E Sparrow. Who would have guessed it? This particular sparrow uh, seems to have a bit more of a quicker response time and is therefore a little bit better in the range of dogfighting. And so you can pull some uh, fairly interesting short ranged pulse doppler moments with said pulse doppler radar. That being said, of course, there is always the opportunity to notch your opponent, which is uh, flying at a 90 degree angle. And that's where your friends, the AIM 9Ps, come in. The AIM 9Ps are uh, AIM 9P3s in War Thunder. They are essentially analogous to the AIM 9J. So, if I call them 9Js, just know that they are more or less in War Thunder the same thing, with the exception of uh, slightly lower G tolerance off the rails, meaning you can only be pulling, I think it's 4 or 5 Gs, but at that point, you're probably going to be blacking out at the speeds that you should be doing in the Phantom anyway. So, the F4 EJ, I would hands down say that this is the single best plane of the patch, that and the Vigan combined are both extremely deadly. Both of these planes are highly capable and I would say that it edges out from the EJ side just a little bit due to its ability to carry more missiles uh, and of course to watch F-104Cs plow themselves into the ground to uh, I guess deny a pulse stop one moment. So uh, as much as I hate that I guess he could have just blacked out so I'm not gonna make any assumptions. So. Speaking of assumptions, we have an F-8E, and I'm going to assume it is the American one, which it probably is, to be honest. Uh, and he's going to get named 7E2 straight heading directly for him, because he's not paying attention. And now he pays for repair costs. So American uh, F-8 Crusader can go back into the bin, and I'm going to concentrate my attention on the American F-4C here. The F-4C doesn't actually get radar... Uh, warning receivers completely off the off the bat, I think, but uh, he does get gun pods, and with those gun pods, he does manage to put some rounds into me because I didn't see him coming quick enough. Pretty much, a quick lapse in concentration can cost you a lot in the Phantom, simply because of its ability to uh, sort of find yourself in a crappy situation. The Phantom, whilst being an extremely capable plane, is a plane that is really meant for the offensive, and if you're going to be stuck on the defensive in a Phantom you're kind of playing it wrong, and you're kind of uh, not playing it the way it should be. That being said, you are going to find yourself in situations where you have no other option other than to be defensive, and so you can kind of pull it off in a couple of uh, one versus ones, but when you're engaging multiple enemies at once, you can kind of kiss your ass goodbye. There's not really much of an opportunity there for you in that way, so it's pretty much a done deal. So, how should you be playing this absolute beast? Well, it's quite simple. You stick with your team. You just work with your team, and uh, try and find teammates that are around to either help you or for you know you to help teammates because that's what a good teammate does because if you want free kills just kill the guy that's behind your opponent and you're pretty much gonna have a big fat W all all day long speaking of big fat W this F5 is uh, not quite notching me hard enough and so ends up in the bin uh, I also end up with a uh, damaged tail from a shitty head-on, that's because I'm a potato, and you've got to remember that this plane, whilst it does take damage decently, as you can see, uh, any damage to its engines is practically a done deal, because jet engines so take, very, uh, take damage very, very poorly. These are planes that you can't just sort of tank everything in and expect to fly home, it's no Stuka, it's no uh, P-47. These things, whilst being big, heavy, and uh, quite impressive, they don't have the durability that others might have because they're just so big and every little detail counts. Every little uh, kilogram of thrust, every last piece of performance needs to be kept on the table and by damaging your aircraft you're really leaving that missing. So having a damaged aircraft is really, really not uh, the best way to go about things. If you do get damaged in this thing, 
my advice would be just head straight back to base. Uh, or alternatively, go for a little bit of a uh, risky head-on, and as the title checks out on the F5C, yep, definitely a risky head-on. That being said, I guess if all, all ends well, then uh, you've got really no problems there. Well, in theory. So, we're moving on to the next match. That was quite a quick match, and you'll find that matches tend to go uh, quite quick in these types of planes. I do take 20 minutes of fuel, but occasionally I have found that the 20 minutes is not good enough. Um, sometimes you're going to have to take your 29 minutes, uh, and I would probably recommend that you take 29 if you're not feeling risky like I always do. You're going to see me taking 20 here just because I can, I suppose. Um, those matches where it goes sour pretty quick, I tend to die fairly fairly early in the match, uh, and those matches that uh, sort of ebb on, I'm able to just sort of clean up the last few or give enough opportunity to sort of head back to base. So, we're on Ruhr here, and it is a beautiful evening, which means that the sun is pointing towards the horizon, and that gives me an opportunity to sort of come from the sun and get my, uh, get my bearings in an ad advantageous position. Well, even so, I'm going to be looking for dots, and I do see a couple of dots up above me, uh, but I also need to keep an eye out on anything that might be coming from the side, and uh, of course, anything that might be uh, pinging me or spiking me with the RWR. I have noticed a couple of things there, you can see on screen with the uh, RWR giving a couple of pings, but I assume that must be from teammates, so I'm going to conveniently ignore that one. Overall, the F4EJ has a lot of stuff. It's just got plenty of little bells and whistles that I personally believe ties it over, that uh, makes it a little bit better than the JA37C. That being said, of course, neither are perfect, and I would say that this plane lacks in a dogfighting capability, which is where the JA37C makes up for that more so than uh, you might think. Now, I am debating here whether or not I want to go for those ground targets, or whether or not I want to go for one or the other. I'm basically going to try and see who's going to notch me and who's not. F4E here, I probably should have gone for him a little bit earlier, but he uh, pops his flares, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to just go in for guns. We're too, far, uh, too close in for missiles, so guns it is, and uh, you know what, I might just throw back a missile. A little bit ambitious there, but I'm going to give up after a second missile. I don't want to waste too much, and of course, I have bigger fish to fry than an F4E. I've picked up a lot of speed in the dive, and the F4E has bled a lot of speed while it was uh, doing defensive maneuvers. And of course, it's good that I managed to keep my speed, because an F5C pops up 5 kilometers behind me, and uh, if I had decided to engage earlier, I probably would have ended up in the F4C's sights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the tables, throw the ACM mode on and hopefully get a nice little AIM-7E and look how quick that thing reacts, too quick for the F4C to basically come to terms with what's about to happen. Well, he got smashed in the face with an AIM-7E, which sucks for him, and of course I managed to barely dodge, as you can see on the screen there, getting super, super lucky, uh, managed to dodge an F8 uh, AIM-9D, and uh, you can see him there coming up behind me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and dogfight him or maybe at least string him out, at the, at the very, very least, string him out. And the F8U, of course, not paying attention, pays the repair cost against the JA37 there. So, we're going to be flipping back around and trying to engage some of those friendlies you saw in the background. And it's kind of looking good on our side. I'm thinking, you know, only three or four left. It's about time to tie this over. We're not going to have many more enemies left, and I'm totally wrong. It turns out that uh, that's about a third of the team that I've spotted so far, and there are a whole bunch more enemies to come. So instead of wasting this, what I should do is I should have probably just kept an eye out and kept a look at the uh, at the team list. And you can see there there's an AV8 and an A7D. Probably shouldn't be in this matchmaker, but it's okay, because I'm going to promptly ask them to leave the matchmaker in the form of an AIM-7E2. There goes one, and the Ace, uh, AV8 is pretty much a done deal. There's no escaping that, even if with, even with the amount of flares that you have, it's just not going to end well. And of course, the A7D here is fighting up against R60s and the JA37, so while he's too busy dogfighting and dodging, I'm going to send an AIM-9P his way, and of course, that is going to hit nice and beautifully. I don't know what it is about the 9Ps, but they just seem to hit, they just seem to work, they just seem to do absolute magic. I just really, really like using the 9Ps and the 9Js. They seem to have this sort of ability to just ignore flares, and I quite like that because it's a nice change coming from something like the R60M, where any flare will basically throw you off straight away, and it's like, here you go, I'm like 300 kilometers an hour, but 
I'll just flare and uh, that's a done deal. And for me, I feel like that's a bit of a cop out, but uh, each to their own, I suppose. And it is kind of historically accurate, much to my dismay. So our next target here is the F5 and the F5 here is going after the F4EJ. Uh, my AIM-7 doesn't quite connect properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send it for the guns, hopefully make some connections and obviously no hit because I am potato. And uh, whilst that is a good thing for the F5, it is a very bad thing for me because I have a bunch of enemies that are trailing me little to my knowledge or you know my lack thereof. So I'm gonna send a 9P his way. It misses for some reason because the F5E is the F5E. I critically hit him and that is going to be a done deal. I only just noticed this F8. I go for the aim 7 but of course because I didn't notice that he was so damn close I managed to uh, lose my plane. And that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind with this plane. It's not one of those things that you can just sort of go in, dogfight away and then pull off at the last second. You have to be very clinical with your approach to things otherwise you're not going to get any results. You have to sort of make sure that what you're going to do is come out on top with no scars. And whilst I've managed to sort of come away with scars in one video and, you know, come away with half a wing and five kills, it's not the optimum result. If you want to basically, you know, fly this plane perfectly, you don't want to get any scratches at all. You want to basically come out with a perfect paint job. And uh, what I've done here is practically the opposite. I have put myself in a couple of risky situations for kills. And whilst that will pay off once in a while, it's not going to pay off all the time. And therefore, you shouldn't have this as a uh, preferred MO, if you will. You should try and avoid these types of things. And the reason why I put it in the video is basically to show you what not to do. Anyway, you might be thinking, well, is there a way of getting four or five kills without throwing your plane away in this thing? And the answer is yes, and this is the battle that's kind of going to show you that. So uh, you might notice the way that I fly this plane. I do like to fly it on the periphery. I'll start on the outside of the battlefield and then work my way in, simply because I don't really feel like being caught out from behind by planes that uh, I didn't spot or that the spotting system failed to alert me to. Of course, the radar can do wonderful things, but if the plane, if the enemy is notching you, or if the enemy is flying at low altitude and you're not using your pulse doppel mode, then you're kind of at a loss there. And as much as you can spot the dot, sometimes the dot spots you, and I really don't like it when that happens. So I like to fly in the periphery in order to, uh, I suppose, compensate. So the SF-8U is being engaged by two F-4EJs, myself and the uh, teammate there. It looks like he's going to go and start ripping his wings, and so that's very, very sad for him. But uh, it's very happy for me because I'm f I get to move on to my next target, which is the F4C. The F4C has basically pulled in behind the first F F4EJ, so second F4EJ, being myself, is going to launch an AIM-9P, send it his way, and hopefully make a beautiful, nice connection, which I do. So, moving swiftly on, we're going to go for this F4C, which crashes into the ground so switching to the next target of opportunity is this other F4E again I'm picking my distances quite cons uh, quite conservatively I need to be careful that I don't run into any other cases where <laughs> I manage to uh, be the victim of my own stupidity once more so using my speed I'm not gonna turn around just yet I'm gonna get myself some distance from that little furball and then uh, basically loop back in hopefully getting myself some nice kills uh, meanwhile, the MiG-23 here is looking pretty juicy. They only have 12 flares, and if they're going to pull a, a move like that, they're probably going to end up facing an AIM-9P. As much as you might think you're not being locked by a radar, don't forget that uh, your enemy still has IR missiles as well. So, I have noticed my fuel getting down to 7 minutes from the 20, which is still plenty, but I'm going to conserve it a little bit here, seeing as though these are pretty much the only 2 or 3 enemies that are left on the battlefield, and whilst they're you know, still making kills and still getting places, I do want to make sure that I have enough fuel for all of my dogfights. And whilst my dogfights are going to be uh, a little bit intense, I'm just sort of starting off with uh, a little bit of slow paced, if you will. I'm just going to go with the next F4E and uh, give him a little bit of a taste of the dogfighting missile, the superior AIM-7E2, as opposed to the uh, inferior Virgin AIM-7E, only usable at high altitudes as we can see. So, switching the afterburner back on, noticing the J-35 is going into dogfight mode, and the MiG-27 is pretty much nowhere to be seen, so it looks like he's going to just go off and die in a hole, so no real threat to me, unless he decides to come back. I noticed that he was falling to the ground at the last minute, and so decided to give no further thought. 
uh, to this guy. Now, the J35D is going to be a little bit of an interesting situation because I don't have any more missiles left. And with no missiles, of course, I have to go guns, guns, guns. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to take my approach nice and easy and go underneath him. Try and lead. Try and anticipate the shot with a little bit of wiggle to the mouse there. And, uh, of course, a beautiful connection from several, uh, a dozen, I suppose, rounds of uh, Vulcan. Now, this is one of these planes that are just exceedingly good. It's one of those just uh, molto bene type planes. You just you just love it. So if there's a flavor of the month plane, I would say this and the Vigan are hands down it. Pulse Doppler radar is absolutely in and high altitude sort of interceptor type gameplay is more or less out. So it's pretty much the end of the age of climbing up to 8,000 meters and... Uh, living up there as such. I would probably say that future gameplay is going to pan out more or less like this. It's going to be that type of gameplay where you're just going to chill at 3000 meters tops, you're going to use your pulse doppler radar and you're going to be using some incredible uh, incredible techniques like notching where you're going to have to put a bit of thought into it and I quite like that. I think skill isn't quite dead but uh, it's certainly not on its way out at any time soon. You've got always something to learn and you've always got something to master, which is why I enjoy top tier as a sort of uh, final broad statement. It is still quite fun, although there is a little bit of work to do, which I will outline in another video. So ladies and gents, that is the F4EJ Kai. I thought I'd like to give the uh, Japanese Phantoms a go again. Well, not again, but you know, for the first time, see how they go. And honestly, I was pleasantly surprised. I actually got this as a test drive from Gaijin. So uh, thank you to Gaijin for giving me the test drive, of course. But um, I'm actually going to have to grind it now. And uh, you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to do it. I think I'm going to do it because it is just so damn good. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to support the channel and support uh, some... Oh, I, I have some conveniently placed stuff that uh, you guys have, have helped fund. So going water cooling, I've got... Uh, EK stuff. I'm hopefully going to be able to put that together within the next couple of months. Um, I am going to water block the GPU as well. And of course, that is all down to your contribution. So thank you so much to those on Air Models, uh, those who donate physically or, you know, uh, monetarily, like through PayPal, etc. Um, and of course, to Patreon. I only have one Patreon and his name is, <laughs> I kid you not, Chadius Thundercock. So if you would like to support the lone cock in uh, his his contributions every month, uh, I would greatly appreciate that. So thank you, Chadius. Or yeah, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I'll have some more content for you soon. Just stick with me. I'm uh, a little bit busy at the moment, but uh, until then, take care, and I'll catch you next time.